so let's get started. So let's just see if there's anything interesting here that they haven't told us. So, okay, the circle center is N. So that is the center for any of you who are like very theoretical and you're like, yeah, but how do we know that that's the center? There, they tell us it's the center. Uh, passes through A and B, B, C and D are joined to form a parallelogram. Okay, so this shape here is a parallelogram such that BE is parallel to the X axis. Okay, so that's important. BE is perfectly parallel to the X axis. Great. Uh, CD is a tangent. Okay, so CD is a tangent. What's the six? Oh, and CD is six units. Oh, okay, so they've given us the length of this line. That's interesting. Right, so it says write down the length of the radius of the circle. Okay, so for one mark, some people are thinking, hmm, distance formula. You could use the distance formula if you wanted to, and you could do it between N and A, but can you see that it's completely vertical? Because look at the X values, they stay the same. So you don't have to use the distance formula, but if you did, it would still work out. But we can just look by inspection to go from 3 to minus 1. What is the distance? It's 4. So the radius of the circle is 4. Okay. So the radius is 4. Let's just remember that for later. Now it says calculate the coordinates of C. Well, you see, C would be directly above. Well, how do I know that? I know that because I know that this line is parallel to the y uh, x-axis. So this line is also parallel to the x-axis. So this radius always hits a tangent at 90 degrees. So if this is parallel to the x-axis, then this line must be parallel to the y-axis. And that is why it has gone directly up like that. Okay? So C would have x coordinates of minus one. Why? Because you can see it's minus one, minus one, minus one. That doesn't change. But this distance over here would be four because it's the radius. So from N to C would be four units. So if you add four onto three, you're just gonna end up with seven. So C's coordinates would be minus one and seven. The next question, calculate the coordinates of D. Now that's very easy because this length is six. So it's just gonna move six along but it's not gonna change in the vertical direction because this line is completely parallel to the x-axis. So we can just move along six places. So you look at this x value and you just add six to that. So that would become five, but the y value would still be seven. So this would be five and seven. And then they want you to now find the area of triangle B, C, D. Now remember to find the area of a triangle we know that it's either gonna be half base times height or half A, B, sin C. We only really use this one if we have angles that we've busy with here, but there's not really any angles. And this mark allocation would probably be a bit higher if we still had to go work out some angles now. Okay, so I'm gonna scrap that one. I don't think it's gonna be that one. So what we need is a base and a height. Now a base and a height make 90 degrees with each other. So if you have a triangle that does this, for example, and you decide that this is your base, then your height must make 90 degrees. So this is not your height. This is not a height, okay? Because these two would not be making 90 degrees. So your height is actually this part over here. So this, this, this part here is your height. Even though it's not part of the triangle, that is still the height of that triangle, okay? So if I look at this triangle, we could use this as the base. That could be your base. Then your height would be this. Just so that these two can make 90 degrees. So your base is still the six, and your height is gonna be this part over here. Now, all of these are 90 degrees because we know that this line was parallel to the x-axis so we know that this line is perpendicular to the, I mean, parallel to the y-axis, which means that this is parallel to the x-axis. So everything's pretty easy to work with here. So what that means is that this point is going to have an x value of minus 4, and its y value, well, is going to be 7. Because everything along this line 
has a y value of 7 because we're not moving, we're just moving parallel. See that? So all the y values will remain at 7 there. So then I can easily work out this height um, by simply looking at the vertical distance from minus 4,2 to minus 4,7. That is a length of 5. So the, the height of that triangle is 5 and the base of that triangle is 6. So the area can now be half base, which is 6, times height, which is 5, and this gives us 15. Um, if they don't give you anything, just say units, uh, or square units, or units to the power of 2, but I think I'll just say square units. All right, so now moving on to the next part. I've tried to fill in as much of the information from the previous parts as I could. So now they want us, now they say the circle centered at N is reflected, ooh, nightmares, <laughs> is reflected over the line y equals to x. Oh my goodness. So the line y equals to x is a line that does this. Okay, it's the line where we take inverses. So like if you have this coordinate here, which is at 3 and 2, when you, re when you reflect it over that line, your x and your y change because that's why it's called y equals x. So the y's become x's and the x's become y's. Okay, so okay, so they're going to be reflecting it across that line. So they said reflected. M is the center of the new circle. Okay, so M, M for Matthew, is going to be somewhere here probably. So M would be probably somewhere over there because they're reflecting it across that line. M is the center of the new circle. The two circles intersect at A and F. Okay, so there's going to be a bit of, rev I'm not going to have space to do this, but we're going to have a brand new circle. Okay, um, I'll try to do my best. We're going to have a brand new circle that's going to, they set it A, and then it would go round, 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 and then it would come up like this, like that. And okay, so there'd be a circle there, and they said that the two circles intersect at A. Okay, so we can see they intersect at A and F. So F would be this point here, where the two circles are intersecting. So that would be F. Okay. It says calculate the length from N to M. Okay, that's easy because if you, as we said just now, if you reflect across this line, um, so if you take this coordinate and you reflect it to M, the coordinates just switch around. So this would just become three and minus one. Okay, so now you can work out the distance of NM using the distance formula. So let's just write that down. x2 minus x1 squared plus y2 minus y1 squared. Um, okay, so I'm just going to quickly go fill that in. So that would be, for example, 3 minus minus 1 and then minus 1 minus 3. And if we had to go fill that all in, we would end up with 4 square root 2. And then if we round that to two decimal places, we end up with 5 comma 6 6. Okay, so I've erased everything so I can just show you guys this. We know that we're reflecting over the line y equals to x, okay? Now, that's a line that normally goes through the origin like this. But that line is also going to be on point A. How come? Because here, the y and the x are the same. Can you see that? So, any point on the line y equals to x has coordinates like this. Minus 2, minus 2. Uh, 4 and 4. The y and the x are always the same on that type of line y equals to x. So then I know that this point is definitely on the on the point A, or this line is going to be gone on A, and it's going to go through 0. And so f is going to be this point over here. The reason is, is that the two circles, if I draw this other circle again, we know it goes through A. Oops, okay, it's obviously going to go much bigger than that, but it would come back around. It's very difficult to draw it actually, but we know it goes through A because it says that the two circles intersect at A. You wouldn't actually see this part, it would go away from the page and then it would eventually come up like this through F and there. Why do I say that it's also going to go through F? Well, think about this. Let's say we have this point. Okay, so this point here maybe is, I don't know, maybe this is 2 and 7. Okay. So if you take 2 and 7 and you take the inverse of that, well, that's going to be somewhere over here. Okay, so that's maybe there. So those two parts are never going to intersect. This part and this part are never going to intersect each other. 
um, maybe I have a point here, which is maybe three and six. Well, if I take the inverse of that, that's going to be somewhere here. That's going to be six and three. So they, these two dots are never going to intersect. But what if I look at, for example, this point over here, which is on the line y equals to x. So maybe its coordinates are four and four. I don't know, we're going to still work that out. If you had to take the inverse of that or flip it over, you would switch the x and y's around, and that's still going to stay 4 and 4. So it will be 4 and 4 on both circles, so it means that the circles are intersecting at that point. You might have to take a few moments just to try conceptualize or to process what I'm saying here, but the only two places where these two circles are going to intersect each other are going to be on the line y equals 2x. Okay? I sat here for a few minutes thinking about this, okay? I, this didn't just come naturally to me. So if you're thinking right now, like, what the heck is going on? That's normal. I sat for a few minutes. This one's actually quite interesting to understand, okay? So the point where these two circles are going to intersect is going to be on this line y equals 2x. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and find the coordinates of f and a by saying that it is the place where the straight line y equals to x intersects the circle. Okay? Because I know the equation of that circle. That circle would be x plus 1 and y minus 3. And we already worked out the radius earlier as 4. Uh, remember we said this radius was 4. So then if you say 4 to the power of 2, that would be um, 16. So that is the equation of that circle. Then we've got the equation of this line, y equals to x. So to find the place where these two intersect, I can sort of substitute this one into the, the, the circle's equation. Okay? And so that would be x minus 3 squared equals to 16. And then guys, I'm just going to quickly rush through this now. Can I tell you why? It is load shedding <laughs> while, while I am busy recording this right now. The power was supposed to come on and my battery has 11 minutes left. And if this laptop switches off, then I lose the last one and a half hours of recording that I've been doing. So I'm going to quickly go and solve this for x. You guys are pretty good at that by now. And when you do that, you should end up with x equals to minus one um, or x equals to three. If you then had to go and work out the y values for each of those, this one would be y equals to minus 1, and then for this one it would be y equals to positive 3. Um, so the coordinates of a we already have as minus 1 and 1, and the coordinates of f we have as 3 and 3 now. So all that we now need to go and do is find the midpoint of af, because that's what they're asking us for. So the midpoint of af is just going to be x1 plus x2 over 2, y1 plus y2 over 2, and so that's going to be minus 1 plus 3 over 2, and then minus 1 plus 3 over 2, and if you had to go and work this out, you will end up with 1 and 1 as our final answer over there.